Welcome everyone, in this tutorial we will be using the Chem Master software to perform a QSAR model development experiment. So the first thing is that I am going to import the dataset. So from file select import structures and you will find the files for this experiment in the description below. So select this SDF file and click open. So now the dataset has been imported. This is a data set of 44 compounds that are active against the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor M2. So this is the target. So the model that we are going to develop is going to predict the activity towards this target. And we have the activity column. It's reported in the EC50 in the nanomolar unit. So QSAR model consists of steps and the first step is to scale the activity and then we calculate descriptors then we divide the data set into training and test set then we build our model and finally we analyze the model that we obtained so the first step is to scale the activity to the log scale so in QSAR modeling we do not use the activity in this form but rather we need to convert it to the log scale and this is done by simply taking the minus logarithm of the EC50. So for each row, we need to take the minus logarithm of the value to get, to get the P activity. So to do this from the table menu, select add calculated column. So this allows us to write a formula that is going to be applied on all the rows. So the scaled activity is called the P activity. So in our case, the EC50, we are going to get the PEC50. So this is the name of the column that we are going to get. So again, the formula is to take minus logarithm of the activity. So I will write the formula, first the minus sign, and then the log function. We want the log 10 function, and then we add the activity variable which is the EC50 and so this is the formula that we need to convert the activity from the EC50 to the PEC50 however note that the activity is in the nanomolar and usually we want the activity to be in the molar so I will simply multiply it by 10 to the power minus 9 to convert it from nanomolar to molar so it's the multiply sign and add 10 to the power minus 9. This is the power sign and I will add this constant and close the parentheses. So this is the formula that we will use to, to scale the activity. Again, it's simply minus logarithm the activity and we multiply it by 10 to the power minus 9 to convert it from nanomolar to molar. So click calculate. And now we have the scaled activity column. So this is a common practice in QSAR modeling. We simply convert the activity to the log scale. So the next step is to calculate molecular descriptors. This will be the X variable in the statistical analysis phase. So this is a simple step from the calculate menu. Select molecular descriptors. And here we are going to manually select a simple set of descriptors. I'll select the molecular weight, the log P, and the rotatable bonds. And click OK to calculate the descriptors. So now we have the activity and the descriptors. We, no we now need to uh, divide our data set into a training and a test set. So you can do this by selecting from the QSAR menu divide data set so the chem master provide you several options for dividing the data set you can either use a random uh, division or you can use a rational method so in this experiment we will use the keener stone algorithm this is very commonly used in qsar it's a rational division method and we will select the columns uh, the descriptors that we just calculated so click OK and now we have a new column that labels each compound 
as a training or a test compound. So this is based on the algorithm that we used to divide the data set. It tries to give you a representative training and test set. So the next step is to build our QSAR model. From the QSAR menu, select build model. The first thing is we need to specify the X and the Y variables. So for the Y variable, select the scaled activity column, the PEC50. And for the X variables, select the descriptors, which we just calculated, which are the molecular weight, the log P, and the rotatable bonds. And then for the dataset division, you can either randomly divide the dataset as we build the model, or you can select a, a division column. So because we have already divided our dataset, we will select the column option. So the name of the column is the set. And the label for the training set is training and the test set label is test. So basically this tells the software that any compound labeled training here is going to be in the training set and any compound labeled test will be in the test set. And next for the model settings. So here we specify the statistical analysis options. And here you can uh, modify different options like scaling the X variables or using feature selection methods and also what machine learning method you want to use. So here we will use the multiple linear regression method. This is a simple and popular QSAR method. And we will also calculate the Q squared. This is the correlation coefficient of cross validation. And you can click OK to build the model. So now we have our model built and these are the validation parameters of the model and here we have the info for the model like the features and the equation of the multiple linear regression method. So here we can see that this model has decent parameters. For example, the R squared for the test set is above 0.6 which is usually the preferred value and for the cross validation Q squared it's higher than 0.5 which is commonly used as a threshold and also we have relatively low values for the root mean squared error and the mean absolute error so this model can be considered acceptable you can export the model to use it later on in virtual screening for example uh, from the right click menu select export model then type the name of the model and click save so now the model is exported and here you can also see a plot for the actual versus the predicted activity this gives you a quick assessment of the performance of the model on all these structures so this concludes our tutorial on using the kinmaster software for qsr modeling this is a very quick tutorial there are many other features in the software and the ChemMaster software is a free software. You can download it and use it for free. The link is in the description.